everybody and welcome to Let's Make Shadow Puppets Together. Uh, my name is Melissa. I'm a puppet maker and I've been making shadow puppets for uh, probably about 15 years now. And um, I want to say thank you to Anna for inviting us uh, to do this shadow puppet um, video with you. And we've got, um, we've got Lee here as well. And Lee is going to be making the uh, shadow puppets and the shadow puppet screen along with you. So he'll be learning at the same time that you learn. So if he has any questions, he's going to ask a lot of the questions, just in case he doesn't understand something. So the first thing that we need for this is we need some kind of a cereal box. If you have other kinds of boxes, that's okay too. Like this, um, this was a box for tacos and it's a little bit smaller than this one, and that's okay. Um, you just know that you have to make a little bit of a smaller puppet for a smaller box so that your puppet has um, plenty of room to run around on. This is a puppet that I made, but this puppet would be way too big for this little taco box. So just keep that in mind. So we're gonna start out with um, making this into sort of like a TV screen. You know how the TV has a frame around it like this? We're gonna do that same thing. We're gonna make a little frame and then we're gonna put a piece of plain white paper on top of it. So to start out with, I always like to use my fingers when I'm working because you might not have a ruler and you might not have something that has a straight edge. So I'm gonna show Lee how we can do that. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to start out with um, a marker or a pen because uh, a pencil is a little bit too light. It's not really going to show up that well on a cereal box. So grab yourself a pen or a marker. And the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to measure this screen. And you're going to, because you, uh, Uncle Lee is a grown up, he's going to use two fingers. But if you're a really young kid, then you're probably gonna maybe use three fingers depending on how small you are. So if you're a small person, then use three. And if you're a grown up, use two, okay? So what we do is we put our two fingers on the end. Okay. And then we just carefully make a little mark right there. Just a small mark, Just right? a small mark. Okay. And then we're gonna make one on this side one on this side and one on this side, just so we make a little frame like this. So why don't you turn your box. Turn it around, do you the can same use your, thing. Yep, two fingers. Two fingers, make a mark. Do that and then turn, my your, mark there. turn your box again. Using the two fingers or three if you're a youngster. And I turn it again. Yep, there you go. So now we've got a, a mark on each side and now the one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. The next thing you've got to do is you've just got to make a line across, and you don't have to worry about it being a straight line because when we start cutting with scissors, it's going to be uh, nice and straight because the way that the scissor goes. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, so just um, make a nice straight line, and I'll support you by holding onto the box. And it doesn't have to be perfect, especially because sometimes when things aren't perfect, it makes it have more personality, it makes it have more character. And we like that in art class. It's definitely not perfect, but that's okay. Yeah. So now we've got our, uh, our frame that's made. So here's the part that could be a little bit frustrating. Um, we're gonna cut out this center piece, but I do not want you coming in from the side like this. You have to poke a hole in the middle and start from there. So you might want to have uh, an adult help you with this. Um, I would open up my scissors like this and then try to puncture a hole. So why don't you try that, Lee? Okay. And I'll hold this box for you. Why don't you try right? Okay, you can try the end. So he's made a hole right here and now you can begin cutting straight across or you can make a hole straight in the middle and start cutting from there too. Because this is going to be all empty this when we're is, done. Yeah, this yeah, is going to so be an empty... And then I get to my line. 
I and mean, sometimes when you get to the line, you need to turn your paper or turn your box so that it's easier for you to cut straight. And I'll just keep helping you by holding the box while you go. And I'm about to hit this line. When you're about to hit that line, you're going to so turn. Gonna stop. Stop and turn the box. Part two. <laughs> Done. Part three. You might need to take a break because sometimes when you cut these cardboards with scissors, your hand can get really tired. So if you need to take a break, it's okay. If you need a, a grown up to help you, ask nicely. Okay, and you're almost done. That's great. Great. So we like to keep these um, these little pieces that we cut out because we could use this again. This could become uh, a scenery. This could become like a house or a tree or a door or um, something like uh, a scarecrow and some pumpkins or who knows what else you could use your imagination. So let's hold on to all of these things. Now what we're going to do is because we need a front and a back we're going to cut another hole in the box that we just made. So what you're going to do is the same thing that you did before. And we started this one already where you're, you're, connect, you're using your fingers to make your lines. And then connect it. There's one more left. There's one more line for you to connect. Right here? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. So you, you do the same thing as you did last time. And I'll put the cap back on the marker. Whoop. Whoops, let me help you with that. I'll hold Thank the box. You. There you go. Oh, I got in. Good job. Okay. You know, every time you need to, turn the box. Okay. Makes me want to have some cereal. Yeah. It makes me want to play this game that's on the <laughs> back of this box. Okay. Almost done. Getting to the finish line. And again, we're going to hang on to this piece of cardboard. Now we've got our lovely little screen. And we see it's not exactly perfect. There's a part here that kind of comes down. It looks a little jagged, but that's interesting. That makes it fun. That makes it cool. Uh, it makes it mine. It makes it yours, right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put the screen into our shadow puppet box. Now make sure that you use some type of a paper that you can see through when you shine a flashlight through it. So I've got a flashlight right here and when I shine my paper on it, would you hold this leaf so everybody could see? When I shine my paper, I can see my hand when I put my hand through like, like a little duck. <laughs> I can see my hand through this paper what would happen if I used a piece of cardboard? I shine my light on the cardboard. Nothing. And I can't, you can't see my hand through it. Okay? So make sure that when you're figuring out what paper you use, try, try to shine your flashlight through it first. But regular printer paper should work really good. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make sure that our paper fits onto our screen. So what I like to do is this this cereal box is almost the same exact size as the paper. Um, but what I like to do is I turn the box and I make sure that the corners, this corner, one corner over here will line up. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have Lee take a pencil I have a pencil here. Pencil? 
And what you're going to do is you're going to trace. Let me turn it this way so that Everybody the audience can see. Can see. So that's the extra paper. Yeah, we want to we want to trace this paper. Yeah. Now we've got this. We've got this line right here. Can you guys see it going across? And we just need to cut that part off with our scissors. So we'll have. We take uh, your safety scissors. I'll do the honors. And while he's cutting, I'm going to get some tape ready. So I like to use the tape that is a loop. Okay, so we've got our screen now. Oh, got you just it. cut this oh, side. Oh, yeah, right maybe here. a little bit here. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit in the corner. So, it so it's not as bi overlap. it's not bigger than the box. Yeah, because then it gets wrinkly. It doesn't look so neat. So now we're going to make loop tapes. Uh, so what you do is you just take a, a piece of tape off, and then this side that's facing the camera, is facing you guys, is the sticky side. And what I do is I fold the sticky side backwards towards me, and I fold it onto itself. Almost like I made a little tube or a little uh, cylinder. So all of this is sticky. And if you have some trouble with this, once again, ask your grown up that's with you to give you a little help. And what I like to do to make sure that my paper is going to be good and not too wrinkly on here, is I'll just take the tape and I'll make some loops on one side first. And then I'll put my paper down so that it doesn't get too wrinkly and it's not too hard to do all at once. So I, I take my paper and I make sure it's really straight and I'm going to press it down onto this just this one side that I made. Very good. So we've got a little bit of wrinkling but I'm going to smooth it out a little. And then we're going to keep going. We're going to make some more loop tapes. I would say maybe um, two, many? maybe two on that one. Two. So one in the middle and then one on the corner. And I'll do one on this side. You can do the corner. I mean, the more tape that you can use, the better it's going to be because you don't want this paper to move around so much. You want it to be kind of tight. So maybe we could use a couple more pieces of tape here. Here's one for you. You can make it into a loop. It's good to learn how to make this loop tape because it's an it's important skill to know. Uh, you're going to need this in, in doing different kinds of crafts in your life. So if you don't get it right away, just keep practicing and um, it's just like one of those things. It takes a couple times uh, to figure out how to do it and then once you figure it out, you'll figure it out forever and you'll know how to do it. Just kind of like tying your shoes. Learning how to tie your shoes is one of those things. Or riding a bicycle. Once you learn how to do it, you're good. You don't forget. It could be a little challenging at first though, right? So now we've got all of our tape and we're going to put it down on the box, try to make it nice and tight so there's not too many wrinkles in it. Um, and I need to also, I need to close up this box. So I'm going to put some tape on that, uh, the part of the cereal box that I use to pour out my cereal. I'm going to tape that closed too. Okay, now we are just about done, but you have the option of making this a little fancier if you want. So one of the things that I did when I was getting ready for this class was I made a little uh, curtain like this. So it looks just like a real theater. 
and I just cut this out of paper and I colored it in with some red markers. So the way that I do that, if you wanted to do that, well, as I just took a piece of paper like this. I laid it across and I drew some curtains on it like this. And then I drew some going across like that. And this is up to you guys. You don't have to do this if you if you don't really want to, but it's I think it's nice because it looks a little special. So if you do that, you can color it in any color you want. I always like to color in curtains red and when I when I I uh, used to take my puppets on the road and go um, to different schools and libraries. I have always had red curtains on my puppet stage. My puppet stage was bigger than this cereal box, but this cereal box is a good size if you're just getting started out and you're just learning about shadow puppets and how to make your own shadow puppet shows. This is just a little something extra that can make it a little special, a little fancier for your audience to enjoy because you're going to show your show off to your maybe your mom or your dad or your grandma or your aunt or uncle or whoever takes care of you in your life. Okay, so we've got our screen now. We've got this nice little um, we've got this nice little curtain. We know that when we shine the light that we can see through it, okay? So now we can start to do the fun, really fun part, which is we can start to make puppets for our show. Okay, so um, do you have a favorite character? Do you uh, really like a character that's in the movies or in a cartoon? from a book maybe, uh, or do you make your own characters? Are you an artist and do you draw your own characters? Um, if there's something that you have in mind and you want to get started right away, I would take a, a, either this cardboard, if, you can, if you're strong enough to cut through it or you have a grown-up who will help you, or you could take a piece of paper. This is a piece of cardstock. And I like to use cardstock because it's a little bit stiffer than a regular piece of paper. So what I have to remember is I can't make this gigantic puppet that's not going to fit in here. So what I would do is I would draw a couple characters to start out with and make sure that they're big enough for your screen. So one character that I made before is a little snake. So I want to test out and see, would you mind holding this, Lee? Yes. I want to test out and see if my snake is big enough. And he's, oh, pretty, he looks good. he's pretty big. Um, he might be a little too big. Maybe I would have to cut him off a little bit. Like the audience wouldn't be able to see his whole body with his whole tail. They might just see part of him if he's going to be talking to another character that's over here. And this is another thing that's important about shadow puppets. When you are showing a shadow of something, the people are not going to see designs on the snake. If you want to, you could make scales, you could make an eye, you could even color him in with colored pencils or crayons. But the people who are watching the show aren't going to see those details. They only see the outline, right? Right. They only see the outline. So if you want to, it's important for you to draw them. You can, but just know that here's a character. Uh, nobody's going to see all of these little flowers that are on this character. They're only going to see all of the the outline of the character. See? We don't see all of those flowers. So just keep that in mind when you're drawing your character. So um, you can also draw 
something that's a background. Like I drew a tree on my uh, shadow puppet screen. It's a little hard to see right now. I don't know why, but um, there, you go. there we go. You can see that tree that's in the background. Here we go. There you go. <laughs> you can see it now. So I also drew a tree because I wanted some scenery for my rabbit to hop around on. And I drew some grass. So you can draw something like that too. So let's get started in, in the drawing. Okay, so Lee has already made um, a small fish. You can see that fish there. Now um, he's made a little hole for the eye. And if you want to, you can poke a little hole out so people can see an eye for your character. So just like that, okay? So why don't you guys do some drawing and do some sketching and um, take your time. You also want to think about, don't draw a character that has too, too many skinny pieces because a skinny piece uh, on the character, it might get cut through when you're cutting it out or it might start to flop down. For example, if I drew a character with a really skinny neck, <laughs> like this character, see? That's too skinny because when I cut that out, I know that I'm gonna have some trouble um, right here. So I might just need to make that a little bit wider like this now. And this is the great thing about shadow puppets too. You do not have to do any erasing <laughs> when you made this mistake in the middle. Like you said, no one's going to see it anyway because yeah. it's just going to be an outline. Nobody's going to see that. So you can make all the mistakes that you want. You're free. So why don't you make some characters right now? And um, if you need to, you can pause this video so you can make some characters and then you can catch up with us. And here's another idea too. If you guys are having trouble with drawing, you can go around your house and you can see if there are any things that you can use. You put your thinking cap on and you say, hmm, what would make an interesting silhouette? What would make an interesting shadow here in my house? And one thing that you could probably find are combs. And when you when you make them move like this, ha 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 ha, it could become something like a an alligator. It's got like these real really sharp teeth. So maybe you want to use something like that if the drawing is not uh, working out for you. You can also um, go outside and maybe you have some interesting things like you can find a stick and you like the way that looks and you want to make a stick figure character out of a real stick. This could be somebody with really crazy long hair. Like he's like, Whoo! he's uh, very shocked or, or surprised about something. So if you want to, you can just use a stick. That's a type of a puppetry called found object puppetry. So it's up to you. You be creative and you make the type of character that you want to make. Now here's another thing too. Um, once you get your characters, you want to make sure, let's say you're, you're making a character like this little bunny and the other character in the show is this little seagull. You want to make sure when you're, when you're putting the sticks on that they're facing each other. Because when people talk to each other, they face each other. So make sure when you talk to, uh, when you put the sticks on that you're not putting, you know, talk to the tail feathers bunny. <laughs> you want to make sure that the bunny and the seagull can really talk to each other. Okay? So do all of your drawing and um, make sure that there's not too many skinny things. And um, remember that they're not going to see all of your um, your pencil marks and everything. Okay, so we'll we'll catch you in a minute or two. In the meantime, I'm going to cut out my fish. Yeah. That I drew. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I was thinking about maybe using a pencil to poke his, his little eye That's and make it a hole. Mm -hmm. And so that way you'd see through it. The light would shine through it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go around his curves. That's the only time you want to poke somebody's eye with a <laughs> pencil. Let's see. Let's see if I could do it. Is it sharp enough? This pencil is not sharp enough. Uh, I think I might got it. Oh, you got it. I might have it right now. Good. I like how you use that technique where you um, sort of move the pencil back and forth, almost like a drill, to get that uh, to get those pieces out. Now he has an eyeball. Yeah, and if you want to, just to clean it up a little bit, you yeah. could take the the parts that are the, the little flappy parts that are sticking out and you could just cut those off so that it doesn't um when you're putting it up against the screen so that it doesn't show up and look like the fish is closing his eye or blinking or something unless you like that you might like to do that that's up to you so this is a good uh, this is a good fish by lee because the light is going to shine through the eye, so the audience is going to be able to say, oh, that fish has an eyeball. So now, um, hopefully you've got a couple of different characters, and we're going to start putting sticks or control rods onto the characters so that we can use them, maneuver the puppets, and make them move around without the audience seeing our hands. That's the magic of shadow puppetry. Um, you don't want to see the hands in in you know blocking the the shadows of the puppet so this is a the puppet that the stick was actually made out of a broken umbrella that i found outside after a stormy day um, another thing that you could use for a stick is uh, a, a paintbrush especially if the top of the paintbrush um, didn't get cleaned right away and the paint got all um, stuck together and you can't really use it as a paintbrush anymore, it's a good thing to recycle your old paintbrushes. You could just get a stick from outside and pull all of the little branches and the leaves off of it and that could be your stick. You could use a chopstick. Maybe you have some um, some chopsticks when you when you ordered food. You ordered takeout food, and you have some chopsticks left over. Or you could just use a pencil too. I would use a pencil that hasn't been sharpened yet, uh, just so you don't accidentally poke your hand or poke your finger or something. Okay. So we're going to use tape, and we're going to stick the tape on a puppet and we're gonna leave a little flap showing and that little flap is what we're gonna bend around the stick like this so that the puppet holds on to the stick just like that so then when we move the puppet there's this long stick that's we don't the audience doesn't see the hands you know they don't want to see my big hands like ha ah, when they're trying to watch the puppet show so um, grab your puppets and get a, a piece of tape. Now, if you've made a little tiny fish or something else that's very small, just know that you probably need to make your tape a little bit smaller. So see, um, for, for Lee's fish, this is a pretty big piece of tape. So um, you're probably gonna have to cut your tape, make it a little bit smaller. So I'll, I'll kind of cut this a bit for you just to make sure the tape doesn't overlap the puppet because then the tape will get stuck to the shadow puppet screen and then you won't be able to move the tape, I mean move the puppet around. So let's see if this is a good size for your little fish. So maybe still a little bit too big. My fish so is kind of small. He's a kind of a small fish. and I mean we could make a, a whole show about the smallness of the fish. Maybe the fish is sad because he's too small. Well, maybe he's so small that he can fit in the in the magical cave, and then in the magical tr cave is the treasure. So here's what I did. I, I cut the tape small, and then I folded uh, one piece of this tape so it's kind of got one little flappy part. 
So I'm going to stick this here. You can see better over here. I got my tape. It's a little hard to see. And I folded part of my tape like this. So there's a little flappy piece. And this little, the, the small part is going to stick to the puppet and the big flappy piece is going to stick to my, my control rod. Okay. So we're going to pass this on. So before you put your tape on, you, what direction is your fish going to be in? He's going to go this way. He's going to be facing this way. Okay. Go this way. All right. So now you're going to put the rod on this side. Yeah. On the back side. Okay, good. So I'm putting a fold mm -hmm. onto his back like this. Mm -hmm. The fold onto his back. Yep. And now there's a big piece of, um, there's a big flappy piece of tape. So it's stuck to him. That's still sticking up. But we have a little extra flap here. Mm -hmm. And now then. Now you're going to take your stick. Would you like to use this old, ratty old paintbrush? Yes, please. Okay, that's a good size stick because it's a little small. So now you're going to put that stick right on the tape, mm -hmm, just like that. So it's standing out towards you and you're going to fold the tape around. Ooh. Oops, let me help you with that. Help me with it. I will hold this stick for you while you fold it up around the stick. And there's, this paintbrush is so old that some of the huh. paint is coming some off of, of it. Off, yeah. <laughs> Maybe this isn't the greatest. Oh, is it tape sticking to itself? If it needs a little bit extra, we could put a little bit more tape on there. We want our, um, our puppets to be really, really tough. So wrap, wrap the tape around the stick just to make sure that it's extra secure so that we don't lose the fish. I think that's good. We don't want the fish to sink down to the bottom of the ocean. We want the fish to be able to swim around. So Lee's got this great little fish now, okay? And I've got this, I think a fish would maybe go better with a seagull than with a, a rabbit. So I've got this seagull and I've got a little piece of tape here. So I'm going to do the same thing where I'm going to fold it so that there's a smaller fold and then there's a bigger flap. And I stick, I'm making sure that it's going the right way because my seagull is going to talk to that fish. And I'm going to, yep, they're just talking to each other like this. How you doing today? Oh, oh, I've got a headache. Okay. I need to eat some fish. And so um, I'm going to stick this tape on to the seagull. And then I guess for this um, seagull, I'm going to use uh, this pencil. So I'm sticking the pencil straight down and I'm wrapping the tape right around it. So it sticks to itself, so the tape sticks to the tape. And if there's some stuff that's sticking up, that's okay. You can push that down. And then we could take another piece of tape just to seal it up. Now there's other ways of doing this, um, but this is the, the easiest way with the least amount of materials. Uh, another way that you could do this is you could do it if you had a flat tack, a thumb tack, and not the kind of thumb tack that sticks out straight, but the side that's very flat. Then you could stick the tack through here, but it's not very likely that people will just have that laying around. If you do have that laying around, then that's a good thing, and you can try that. If not, it's okay to just use some tape and try to like shake your puppet and make sure that your puppet isn't going to fall off. If, is it, does it feel good? Does it feel like it's secure on there? Then, then you're ready to move on. Okay. Now that we have our shadow puppet screen, we have our shadow puppets uh, and they're all fixed with their rods. We can start to come up with a show. 
Um, and we can start to think about what kind of a background do you want. Maybe if you've got some sticks and things like that from outside, you could even put this on, uh, you know, you could tape this stick onto the inside of the, uh, of the shadow puppet screen. So something like this. This almost kind of looks like seaweed. So I could take some tape and actually like, let me cut this a little smaller because the tape that I have is gigantic. And I'm gonna just tape this stick right onto the screen and it's gonna look pretty neat because I've got the this nice effect like there's a seaweed underneath Whoa. the ocean. That's really cool. Now um, I could take my uh, you know other pieces of my stick and I could put them over here or I could draw some things and then cut them out and stick them on and then I'm gonna have to come up with my show using my imagination uh, and that's something that it, it takes a little time to do that so here's um, here's the fish now what happens when um, the fish moves closer to the flashlight, Lee? Move your fish close to the flashlight. Whoa, he got bigger. He gets big. And when you move the fish away from the flashlight, he, he gets, gets small. smaller. So let's show the audience what we were doing. So when you, uh, here we could do it like this. Can you see on the table? When we have the fish, let me move it over here a little bit. We have the fish and we move him uh, closer to the light. He gets really, really, really big. See how big his shadow is on the table? And when we move the fish away from the flashlight, he gets smaller yeah, and real smaller. Small. small. Gigantic. Big. Small gigantic okay so you can you can even make that into your show so why don't we say once upon a time there was a little fish he was really little and he was so small and he what what, what was he feeling like he felt really hungry he felt so hungry so, so. he decided to eat some plants oh. mm, 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 mm. oh i'm feeling full Oh, I'm growing, getting bigger and fuller. Oh, now I'm a big fish. And now we have to find some way to bring my seagull into the show. So what if we said the fish got so big that he started to grow out of the ocean and he came onto land. And he saw a seagull. Whoa. I'm really out of my element here. You are a fish. You're supposed to be in the water. What are you doing on land? I got so big from eating so much that I popped right out of the ocean. Well, I've got an idea for you. What's that? Why don't you jump on my back and I'll take you to the biggest ocean I know. Let's go. So the fish jumped on the seagull's back and they went on an adventure. So that's just the beginning of the show. You could do something like that. And if you have two screens, you could even have two locations. You could do, um, you could set up your shadow puppet screen, something like this, with one on top of the other. And if, you, if you're a little bit nervous about them knocking over, I would just take a little bit of tape and I would just tape them to each other. I'm taping the small one to the big one. And then you could also, if it's okay with, with uh, your family, you could also tape the, the shadow puppet screen, the bottom of it to the table so that it doesn't get rocked around too much. And then you've got two different sceneries and you could go from one scenery to the other. 
Sometimes you need somebody um, to help you hold the flashlight and it's a little hard to do the puppet and the flashlight at the same time. So you could ask somebody else to rehearse with you. Shadow Puppet Show and you, you could share it with us um, and you could also um, you can make your own music up too. If you have some musical instruments uh, at home, you could play a, a little song at the beginning of the show, and then um, or play some dramatic music like bum 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 bum. Or even some sound effects. Yeah, you could make some sound effects. You could say to the audience like, everybody go like this. and then everybody can make the different sounds. You could play around with special effects. So here's an interesting um, piece of paper that just has all of these little uh, teardrop shapes that are cut out. And when you put this behind the shadow puppet screen and you move it back and forth, it looks just like it's a rainy day. Like shh. And I'm just sliding this paper across back and forth to make it look like it is rainy. Here's another thing that I like to do. I like to recycle a lot of things. So here's um, here's a uh, little net and this had, uh, I believe this had some lemons inside it or oranges inside it. And I like to, the way that this looks when I put it behind this shadow puppet screen. Um, and then this could be uh, a net that maybe somebody gets caught into. Maybe the little fish will get caught inside the net. He got caught in and he got oh. out. Yay. Oh, he barely made it out with his life. Here's some other interesting things. This was a bag. Uh, I think it was a potato bag and it's got some interesting stripes on it. And I said, wow, this would be pretty neat to see. What, what, what would this look like if I could tape it to my shadow puppet screen? This almost looks like a circus tent all of a sudden. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, come and see the wonder fish. He's a wonderful fish that can breathe on land and in the water. Ha ha ha. He's growing. Run away, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, ah, he's taking over. And then there's some other interesting things that you could do with color. Here is, um, this is a type of a, a cover that people use to keep their files together, but it's a beautiful um, translucent um, paper and you can shine this onto um, your shadow puppet screen and there's a lovely blue color and this could definitely be a, an under the water scene. Now this looks really realistic. The fish underneath the water gobbling up some of this delicious seaweed. Or you know you could remember that you've got um, your combs or whatever you found in your house and this is a, a really, really scary crocodile all of a sudden with big, big teeth. And maybe the crocodile, ha, 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 ha. Maybe he's looking for that perfect meal and pretending that he's just a log like alligators do. And then he says, good day, little fishy, chomp. Okay, so you've got a lot of different things that you can use with your thinking caps on and look around your house and make sure you get permission before you, um, before you take anything that um, your family might not want you to take. So just make sure you ask and use your manners. Um, and here's the last thing I'm going to say. It's really fun when you invite your audience. So you could do something like making a poster you could say, um, you could put it on, on the refrigerator or you could make little invitations and you could uh, slip them underneath people's doors and say, today there will be a puppet show. And then you can write down, well, living room, 5 p.m. 
and invite all of your family members to see uh, the beautiful show, the funny show, the wacky show, the cool show that you created using your imagination and um, using your your uh, family members that can be a part of your show or they can just be the audience and they'll thank you for it. Um, so I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else left to say. Um, I think we've covered everything. So thank you so much for watching How to Make a Shadow Puppet. Again, we'd love to see the work that you come up with. Um, please share it with us if you make a video or if you make some, uh, some pictures. We'd love to see your work. And thank you so much. And if you guys ever need anything, um, just come to my page, Shadows of Melissa B. And I'll be happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much and happy puppet making. Mm -hmm.